for you. We are going to continue with our study, and before we do so, let us begin with a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you because you are a God, you alone, you are a God. And we are studying your word because through this word you have spoken to us. You have spoken to humanity. And we want to know you more and to differentiate you, mighty God, with many others who are called the gods of the nations. Help us as we continue to study your word so that we shall have understanding. Give us understanding for the glory of your holy name. Amen. I salute you all. I thank God for you. Thank you so much. We have continued to study the book of Hebrews and we will continue to repeat many times when I come on air that this book is very relevant to our day. It was written for the first time to those who had received the gospel of our Jesus Christ. They had the preaching of the apostles of Jesus Christ. They believed. And by believing meant they have received the truth as preached by the apostles. And these Jews had been believers and followers of the law of Moses. And their worship was done in the temple in Jerusalem. So that was their tradition, as much as we have our traditions. The difference between their tradition and our tradition is God Almighty had revealed himself to their father, Abraham, the biological father, Abraham. So these people have been worshipping the, the one true God. The only one thing which was not proper is that they never did it the, the way God wanted. Many times they failed because they would come to the temple, they would worship the one true God, and yet when they go home, they have erected an altar of another god, like Baal, for example. So they would worship the true God and go and worship Baal. And the God I'm talking to you about, the Almighty, the only one true God, does not accept that kind of worship. And he does not change. That is the way he is even now. You cannot worship him and go and worship another God. He says in his word that he is a jealousy God. He feels jealousy when his children do not recognize him and him alone. So that is the way they were. But what was happening now, they had received the true gospel of Jesus Christ. And they were being persuaded or convinced to go back to Judaism, their traditional religion. So you can see this book to the Hebrews is very relevant to us. People who, who, are, who belong to another tradition, worshipping our traditional God, Whichever nation you come from, you know very well that if you are a Kikuyu, you had your traditional way of worship. And when the good news of the word of God was preached to our forefathers, they accepted. And they have moved on for many years. For more than 150 years in this Kenya, they have believed in God, the one true God, and they believed in Jesus Christ. And that is the way we should believe in God, 
is God in Trion. He is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They believed in that way. But it has come a time. It's like a wave. Not only to one nation, but all of us. People are rejecting the one true God and moving backward to their former way of worship. So the way this book was addressing the people that time it was written, somewhere between 50 and 70 AD, that is when the book was written. Now from that time, they were trying to, to be persuaded. I mean, the other is persuading them not to go back to their traditional religion and, and to hold the farm on their faith. That is what the other has been doing. And that is what we have been studying from the time we began. We have studied the other books, but this particular one is very relevant for everybody. So praise the Lord. Let us continue studying. We have done a lot. We have read 10 chapters of this book. And personally, I am fully persuaded that there is no other God. There is only one true God. I'm persuaded. And I'm also persuading you, my listener. Praise the Lord. Now let us move to chapter 11. I will read about half of the chapter, explain a little for today. And it is all about faith. What is faith? That is believing. Even when people try to worship other gods in whichever manner, they apply a faith. It's only that they apply faith wrongly. But now here the author is telling us, now faith is confidence in what we hope for, and assurance about what we do not see. Believing and like we are seeing what our eyes cannot see, what we cannot see with the, our eyes, and yet we believe. Praise the Lord. That is what faith is. We believe there is a God, yet we have never seen Him. We believe what He has told us in His Word. And brethren, what is the, the difference between our belief in a traditional gods and our belief in one true God? In the traditional religion, you believe about a God, maybe he's in a certain location. You associate your God with a certain location. And let us try to imagine what that God, that tradition of God does, and what this one true God does. The tradition of God, okay, is there, the way you believe, but that God has no plan for you, a future plan for you. He doesn't have any. You continue to live, you continue to worship him, and he does absolutely nothing. But because you believe in him, you continue to offer prayers. For example, one time in Israel, there was a problem because people, some people had given up to worshiping a god called Baal. Where there was one true God who had revealed himself to Abraham. And Elijah challenged them. Elijah was the prophet. He challenged them. 
let us try and see who is true. So he called upon the prophets of, of Baal. And they agreed, let us offer a sacrifice. You have a bull, you slaughter, and you pray to your God, and your God will bring down fire to consume the sacrifice. And I will pray to my God, Jehovah, who is the only one true God. And if you, your God, Baal, brings the fire and it consumes the sacrifice, then we shall follow. Then, if my God brings the fire, he's the one we are going to follow. And this is what happened. Those prophets started. They tried to call upon the name of their God, Baal. Baal was an image. And they believed that was God. Although that God never did anything, it didn't work. It didn't speak, it did nothing. If it was to move from one place to another, it had to be carried. Just you are witnesses, you have seen gods being moved from the temple, their temple, and taken to town for a walk. They have to be carried because they are not a god. And you know what happened? With Elijah, when he called the name of God, fire came and consumed the entire sacrifice. That is the difference. This God has a plan for the future of humanity. From the time of creation, he is the one who created the first man. And he made a woman from that man, removed a rib, and he created a woman. So the God we pray, and we claim that he is the only one true God, is a creator. He has created us. He created a system of reproduction that man will reproduce himself it is the same god creating and he's, he has a plan for the for these people who are created in the future what will become of them that is the difference between other gods and this one true god he has a plan for our lives, that when we die, it is only this body which dies, but our soul lives forever. And our soul will be accountable to him, the creator, of what we did when the soul and the body lived together. So as we continue to live, to agreeing and disagreeing on who was the true God, a time is coming when we shall give account of what we did with our bodies. So whatever we are doing is not a joke. It will be brought to you. But the other gods, they have no time, no time you will appear before them because they don't have life, they don't live. But the one true God is alive. Praise the Lord. So the author of the book of Hebrews is telling us something, something which is a substance, something you cannot touch, but it moves you. That is called faith. So faith is not just believing, it acts. 
you can do something and yet you are considered to be a man of faith by what you do. So this is how he starts again. Let me read again verse 1. Now faith is the confidence in what we hope for. Any assurance about what we do not see. So the much I'm telling you about what God will do, about what he has said in his word, faith will help us to perceive what has been promised. And as we to and wait upon him, he will accomplish verse 2 this is what the Asians were commanded for the Asians are those people who lived long before us as the other is writing to the Jews who had faith in Jesus Christ for many generations from Abraham they had lived and they had faith in this one true God. This one true God has a plan for human beings, but they had disobeyed him. They had started worshipping other gods who are objects or imaginations. And as I have told you many times, they lived for a while, several years, not worshipping the true God, but they had started worshipping the heavenly beings, like the moon, the stars. Then they went further and created their own images made of wood, coated with gold and silver. And they called those objects to be God. So they departed completely from knowing God. They developed culture, way of life of people without God. And because God, because of his mercy, he came down and he revealed himself to this man, Abraham. He will be the main topic in this study of chapter 11. There are many others who are accorded and recorded in a book. It is like a hall of fame. People who had done great things. We can build a, a house and put their names on because of what they did. And we are going to read their names. But after reading their names, we are going to concentrate in this one person, Abraham. So this, this is what the ancients were commanded before. That was Abraham, his son, Isaac, his grandson, Jacob, then it went on from generation to generation up to these particular people to whom this word was written. First three, by faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command. So that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. That is by faith. We only find ourselves here on this earth. And by faith we believe that God created what we see out of nothing. And that is the greatness of our God, that out of nothing he was able to create something touchable that we can see. There had not been another world that God learned from 
looking at it and he formed another one. There was nothing before. He is the source of creation. Man, because of his unbelief, have come up with a theory of a big bang. And that is what is being taught to children that don't believe. Children are being told not to believe what the Bible says. What the Bible says is what is faith. But men have come up with their, that theory of what being bang. If a big bang was like a collision of two objects or two atom, atoms, whatever they were, that men are believing they collide and hit one another and produced what we see. What was the source of those atoms? Where did they come from? If they were not created by a being, a spiritual being, like our God, they cannot explain. They only say there was a big bang. But it is God who created this world and the entire universe out of nothing. He formed it, and we believe that by faith. That's what faith does. It helps us to see what we want to see. We cannot see how he did it, but we can see what he did. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I pray that all of us, we understand and believe. Then he moves on from the world which, was, which is already created. We believe it was created by God. Then the other comes closer to what our minds can comprehend. He says, by faith, Abel, the first, this was the second human being to be to then he produced the second son, Abel. And you know the story according to the book of Genesis. They were offering sacrifices. Abel was keeping books, animals, and Cain was cultivating the land, producing crops. And each offered what they, they were producing. And we are told in the book of Genesis that what Abel offered was accepted by a God. He, may, he gave a choice animal, the best of what he produced. I don't know how he made the choice because there is a way God looked at it. Because God does not only look at what you are doing, he is God. He goes deeper into your heart. And he knows the condition of your heart when you are giving. So Cain's gift was rejected. And he was very bitter. That is what we read in the book of Genesis. But this man called Abel. That is what the other is telling us. By faith. Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. So this man, Abel, had knowledge through faith of how he was supposed to give an offering to God. Of which even Cain could have, but he has a different mind. 
So that was faith. What did the Abel do? He didn't do much, but his action was led by faith. So you could be there. And what you do makes you a man of faith. If you just believe in God, even if you do nothing else, that is faith will do something in your life. Praise the Lord. Then he goes on to explain. By faith, he was commanded as righteous. When God spoke well of his offering, he was considered righteous. When God spoke well about his offering. The same God, the one true God, who was judging between Abel and Cain, is the same God we are talking about. He is the one true God. He is the judge. And he will come to judge each one of us. And it will depend on what you believe in. Because faith helps you to make a decision. There is a faith which helps you to be saved. What do you mean by being saved? It's by moving, you are moved from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light by believing in our Lord Jesus Christ. And it is only by faith you can do that. The Almighty God produces faith in you. It, it is a production of your thought system. And that production receives the word of God. When that, the word of God is preached. Then the Almighty adds something in it. Something which you do not deserve, neither do I. It is called the grace of God. So it is God's grace coming to your heart where faith has developed. And the union of God's grace and your faith makes you a saved being. It makes you a new creation. I am saved because I believed I had that faith. And by grace, I was saved. So it is that faith that Abel had when he was giving the sacrifice. He knew, because that time it had not been revealed about Jesus Christ. They didn't understand the nature of God. But by faith, this man, Abel, understood the completeness of God. And that is the way we should do it today. We should believe in the triune God. He is one. Who is the Father? The Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. So it is by faith we are, we are saved. So faith can be divined. There is a difference between saving faith and the faith which causes you to live. You live by faith. That faith in you, creating hope to move on and seeing into the future what you do not even see now, but yet you perceive it. Amen. You receive it by faith. And that is what Abel did. And by faith, Abel still speaks, even though he is dead. 
he was killed by his brother. He had the faith. So even if Abel died, he's, he still speaks. So there is a difference between a man who believes in one true God and another one who does not. If you die and you don't believe in this one God, you have no hope. And it is the truth. Because these other religions does not have any teaching, any knowledge of life after death. Those who think about it, think wrongly. Because there are those who talk of reincarnation. You are a one. You, I'm pointing to you, who is listening. And me, I am John Mwaniki. That is my name. Since the world was created, until the future forever, there will never be another John Mwaniki except me. I'm the only one. So even if I die, I will remain that way. And I believe, according to this word I'm teaching you, come back to life again. Amen? So we have a future, even when we are dead. Abel died many years ago. In fact, he was the first human being to taste death. And he still speaks. He's alive. Amen. Then that is the first person. Let us move to the second. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. Enoch was the seventh man from Adam. And in those days, people used to live many years. You could see many generations. So possibly Enoch knew Adam. He was the seventh. And so they lived many years. So there were so many people very old because you could find a man of 900 years and his great, 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 great child who is 100 years and they were still living. Just imagine that kind of life. They lived so long. This man, Enoch, he was so friendly to God. He fellowshiped with God. God would come and visit him. The same way he was visiting Adam in the garden. When you read the book of Genesis, God used to come to the garden and visit Adam and Eve. They have a, a time together, a fellowship. But that fellowship was broken by sin of disobedience, disobeying what God had told them not to, not to do. So that was Enoch. He didn't test the death. One time he came, they had a fellowship, they moved, he was taken. He never died. He could not be found because God had taken him away. He was the first person not to taste death. The second person was Elijah. These are the two who are there in heaven, in the spiritual world. They went with their body. So this is about Enoch. He was taken away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without, okay, 
he pleased God. And we are told by another person who had a revelation. In the New Testament, there is a book called Jude. And that Jude is the brother of Jesus. He has written in that small letter, very nice letter, packed with theological material. He tells us that Enoch was a preacher of righteousness. He was preaching. So he was preaching to people. Amen. That was one person of faith. Abel, Enoch. Then in verse 6 he says, And without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who honestly seek him. That is the secret of having faith in God, the one true God. When we come to him, you must believe that he exists. Then you start seeking him. So you see, now to seek this one true God, you must abandon all other beliefs. Every belief of any other God. And you believe there is this one only. And that he exists. And you start seeking him. And he will reveal himself to you. Amen. Then he moves up to, to the third person. By faith, no one, when he warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, built a knack to save his family. This is what happened during those days. Since God created the earth, they had not seen rain. It had not rained. Because the earth was covered by a canopy of water. So the rays of the sun would not hit the earth. They would and those rays are the cost of the short life we don't live long the way those people used to live many years it was because the earth was covered with a canopy of water and there was another water underground so the earth was receiving a vapor from Adam. That is how plants grew. There was no rain. And now here comes a man called Noah. God tells him, make yourself an ark. An ark is a building, a structure, which looks like a ship or a boat. And he took a long time to build it. He obeyed God. When God spoke to him and told him, build an ark because it is going to rain, people didn't understand because they had shortened shortage of faith. They didn't have any. They didn't believe in what God can do. They didn't understand, neither could they obey, but by faith, this man Noah obeyed. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with the faith. He obeyed. He was considered righteous by God because of obedience. 
and he obeyed by faith. Amen. So the decision of faith was made by Abel, was made by Enoch, now made by Noah. And it continues up to you and me. We should have faith and do what God wants us to do. Amen. Then he moves on. Verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when he called to God to a place, he would, not, he, he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went. I fear this man and I really respect him. Abraham. There was nobody in his generation. The whole world after Noah had gone astray. They had lost touch with God. They never called upon his name. They never offered the sacrifices. What remained in the entire humanity they had the knowledge that there is God, but they had created objects which they offered the sacrifices to. So they would make a structure and call it God, start worshipping, start giving sacrifices to it. Why I fear this man? There was nobody to support his faith. He believed what God has, had said. He was given very simple instruction. Leave your lad that in a city called Ur, you are. Mesopotamia is the land Euphrates and Tigris. This because it is no longer there. And God told him, get out of this place. And he go to a place I will show you. You know, the faith that it cannot be compared with what Abraham had. Because before, most of those who have come to other nations like America, some have gone to Europe. Many Kenyans have gone to many parts of the world. They didn't just go to where God will show them. But they knew there is America. They knew there is Europe. But this man, Abraham, who was a moon worshipper, his family worshipped the moon. The community, the village where he lived, they worshipped the moon. So he didn't know this God, the one who true God. He didn't know him. And yet when this God revealed himself to him, told him, go to a place I will show you. He obeyed. He took off. And I thank God he had a woman who was obedient to her husband. Many women today do not listen. I'm sorry, that is not my topic. They don't listen what their husband says. I tell you, there is chaos in the families because women have left their area how they should live because god have ordained women and where they should be their place in the family god has ordained the place of the father the man and god has ordained the place of children he is the founder of the family but, but we have so much disobedient but i thank god because of this woman called sarah 
his wife. He, they just, they had married. This woman had no children. And they had lived for a while. Because this time, Abraham was 75 years old. He's the Abraham we are being told about. By faith, he listened to what God said and he started off going to a place which God will show him, but he doesn't know which place that was. He started going by faith. He was called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance. He obeyed and went. Even though he did not know where he was going. Can you imagine? This was great faith. By faith he made his home in the promised land. Like a stranger in a foreign country. He went many miles from Mesopotamia to Canaan. Without going into the detail how he went, he went to Haran, then he went down to Mesopotamia, no, no, to Canaan, a place called Shechem, another place called Hebron, those are the places. And that is the land which God came many years later and appeared to him and he told him, Do you see the land? Look what you can see. He was on, on a high place. Look west. Look north, east, and south. The far you can see, this land I'm going to give to your descendants. It was not given to him. It will be given to his descendants. He lived in that country as a foreigner, living To the other, and at that time, is his son, and he gave his son who are as we the same family. So he heard the promise by faith, he will be given a piece of blood. Amen. For he was looking forward. He said it was based on something more than he could see, but he could see far into the future. He was looking forward to the city with the foundations, whose architect and builder is God. So he was seeing something more than what we see. And that was the product of faith. By faith he could see that city. Amen. And as we started, that faith is the seeing of something which you cannot see now. Having that confidence of the existence of something God has told you. The way God has promised us eternal life, that we shall live with him if we believe in Jesus Christ. That is city which Abraham was seeing is the same city we are waiting to go into. And you shall only go if you have to faith. Let us move on. And by faith, even Sarah, who was past his children bearing age, she was completely done with the giving birth. But she was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful, who had made the promise. God had promised that Sarah 
will give birth to a son. How could his descendants get the land which is being promised if there was no production from Sarah? She believed that she would get a son. Verse 12. And so from this from this one man and he was a good as good as he dead that is abraham he was as good as he dead as a man his, his age he was done he came with descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sad on the seashore that was the promise sometimes he god he would appear to abraham and he confirm his promise then he would disappear and abraham does not see him again there is a time he waited for 13 years he doesn't see god every day but he had faith in this one true god amen and this one true god came later and he told him to get out of his tent at the night he was told to look up in the sky do you see the stars can you count them your descendants will be like those stars and in fact it is true there are so many things amen let's move on they are very many i will tell you more about these people jews they are very blessed all these people were still living by faith when they died they did not receive the things promised. So God had promised the lad to Abraham. He didn't get it. Isaac, his son, he didn't. Jacob didn't. Until the descendants of Jacob, including himself, they went down to Egypt. Jacob lived there until he died. His descendants lived there for 400 years. Still, they had the hope of the promised land. They all died having, they, they didn't receive the land. They only received the promise and he only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on the earth. So concerning that promised lad, they knew they were strangers and foreigners on the land, but they still held that promise. The same way we are holding the promise of everlasting life in Jesus Christ. Because it has been promised to us, those who have faith in Jesus will never die. They will receive it in Jesus' name. Let us hold it to that promise. So they died holding the promise. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. That includes us. The Jews received that land, but our focus should be on that city which Abraham was looking unto. That is where we are going. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they had to return. So they had not possessed it. Although they lived in Canaan, they lived in tents as strangers. They never possessed anything. 
I think in Canaan is the only piece of land Abraham possessed. Is the cave he bought to bury his wife when his son died. That is the only piece of land he possessed because he paid the money for it. The rest he was promised, but he never got it. Verse 16. Instead, they were longing for a better country. They lived with the hope by faith. A heavenly one. They were thinking of a heavenly city. And they have not given up. They know that there is a city they will live on. And as they were waiting for the promised Messiah, because this Messiah is the one who will lead them to enter into that kingdom, to enter into that city, they have been waiting for the thousands of years. Except for one problem happened. When he came, they didn't recognize him. They are still waiting. And he came. Now the fact is that they rejected him. We, the Gentiles, got a chance. We, people who worship the other gods, and have said in Jesus, now we are partakers of that kingdom. And we shall enter there with those Jews who will believe in Jesus. Amen. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called the young God, for he has prepared a city for them. He cannot be ashamed to be called God of Israel, God of Abraham, of Isaac, of Jacob. He cannot be ashamed because his promises are true and these people have got faith. Let us go on with very few verses. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the noise. I'm sorry for giving me. Anyway, for bear with me, <laughs> somebody is calling through the WhatsApp. By faith, Abraham, when God detested him, offered Isaac. It was a test. He offered Isaac as a sacrifice. Briefly, let us think about it. Isaac was born. The problem grew an adult. Isaac was an adult, not a boy of a few years. You can imagine him, Isaac, and his father Abraham walking, going to Mount Moria, where Abraham said we are going there to worship. He was an adult. And he accepted it because of faith he had in God. When God told him to go and offer him as a sacrifice, he did not argue. He believed that this God who promised have got the power to bring him back to life. He who had embraced the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son. Even though God had said to him, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Can you see the conflict of mind? What was Abraham thinking? What is going to happen? But still, he held firm the faith in God. The only one God. Abraham and God even raised the dead. And he saw in a manner of speaking, he did leave Isaac back from death. He believed that Isaac could come back. 
Even if he killed him on the altar, God would bring him, bring him back. So, by faith, Isaac blessed Jacob. I want to explain in detail about that because it, it is wonderful that he had such faith. Go and offer Isaac. And in faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau in regard to their future. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of Joseph's and worshipped as he leaned on the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when his end was near, spoke about the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt, and he gave him instruction concerning the burial of his bones. I wanted to pick briefly on the few points at the closing of what I have read. Abraham blessed his son Isaac. Isaac blessed two sons, Jacob and Esau. And Jacob blessed the two sons of Joseph. That is after blessing each of his sons. And these grand children, he extended the blessing to these grand children. That is a lesson to us as fathers that we have a responsibility of blessing our children. Let us take this responsibility, men of God, that it is our duty to bless our children so that they will know this one true God. Don't allow them to believe in the Big Bang and the other theories. Let them believe in this one God and bless them. Lead them into knowing the truth and they will live forever from one generation to another your family will worship the true god now you have found jacob leaning on his staff like this leaning on the staff a staff is the walking stick very old, dying and blessing the children, the two children. That is what we should do. May the Lord bless you. There is a lot, a lot to learn. We shall continue learning about more people who are blessed. But we have mentioned just a few. And we have known there is a saving faith. And that there is that faith which through which you will live. Because the Bible says faith live in that one true God. Because he's the only one God, and there is no other forever. Take your stand and believe in that God as we continue to study. He will continue to bless you. Hallelujah. Our Father in heaven, I thank you and praise you for whom you are. You are a God almighty. You created the heavens and the earth out of nothing. You are extraordinary. You cannot be compared with the images or imaginary spirits and objects. You cannot be compared. You alone, you are a unique, the creator. I worship you in the name of Jesus. I commit everybody who has listened to me and those who will continue to listen to this message that they will seek you. They will start questioning and asking 
And when they ask these questions, who is the true God? Reveal yourself to them because you are the only one true God. I worship you in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. God bless you.